Now this particular JSP should forward to my welcome JSP file. And I'll click Control S. I think I'm done now. I'll take a, a quick look at the portlet deployment descriptor. Nothing too crazy or special in there. And now I'm just going to right click on JSP display and say run, run on server. Take the default, click finish. Now you notice there that I actually have two projects that are going to be running on the server. I've got basic portlets and JSP display, which was just added. And it looks like JSP display isn't being displayed. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly bounce the server. And once I'm done bouncing the server, we'll end up seeing the JSP display come up after I select right click and run on server. But I'm going to let that server go from stopping to restarting to starting once again. Now it's starting. And so now you can see that actually I have my little JSP running, and it's knowing that we speak English. Also notice that I've got a tab here for JSP display and a tab here for basic portlets. If I click on basic portlets, it'll actually show all the portlets from my basic portlet application. So both of these portlet files are being deployed. Now one thing I should mention is inside of my uh, welcome JSP file, I'm actually using the render request because I've got the special define objects tag in there that comes from the portlet API. However, it is actually possible to access the regular request and response object from the servlet API. So here's my welcome JSP. And this welcome JSP file is well, it's the same JSP file that I had before. Um, I've actually copied and pasted some code that um, I took from, from uh, my book on JSR 168 portlet development. And you can see that I'm not actually using the render request or the render response. I'm actually, actually accessing the regular servlet request and HTTP servlet response object. And uh, even though you're not really supposed to do that, the fact is these JSP files are J2EE servlet API compliant JSP files and you can actually access those properties in here. And here you go, there's that JSP displaying different information, information about the browser that I'm using um, and uh, information about the, the language that I'm speaking as well. And all of that comes from this particular JSP file here. So anyways, that's a little bit of information on how you actually code your JSPs. Actually, one last thing I did want to show you. I'm going to export that file. So I'll X that, export that as a WAR file. JSP display, and I'll call it JSP display.war. Export the source files, why not? And taking a look in my various different WAR files, where did I export that to? No, did it finish exporting? Let's see, file. Export. That was a war file. Where the heck did it go? Oh, it didn't go anywhere. Went into the Netherland. There we go. Put it into that war files folder. JSP display. Now finish. And going in and taking a look at that particular file, the question often comes comes around, um, where do those actual files go? Well, if I change the extension to zip and open it up with an unregistered copy of WinZip, you notice that welcome JSP file is really just in the root of the war file. So in fact it's not even in a subfolder. Now inside of your code of course you can specify directory structure and, and subfolder them out. But when we actually say include a particular a 
particular file. So here we say include welcome JSP slash welcome JSP. That is mapping directly to the root of the war file, as you can cleanly see right there. Anyways, that's it for doing JSP development. Um, I do want to uh, remind you, I'm the author of What is WebSphere and the SCGA Certification Guides. Please head over to www.scga.com or even mcnz.com for more great tutorials and help out the website by perhaps even clicking on a Google ad or two. Thanks a lot and happy WebSphere!